Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining again. Uh, on behalf of the EdTech team, uh, the entire department, we just want to let you know that we are here for you. We right. want to support you. We know that you have. We just want to let uh, you know that we are here for you. We right. want to support you. And we, what happened? Go ahead and my mute microphone. that other. Yes. Go ahead and mute the live version. There you go. Sorry about that. That was me. <laughs> Okay, thank you. thank you. We uh, were having a little microphone difficulty, so we're okay now. Um, like I mentioned, we're here for you. Um, we know that this is a difficult time, and so we're doing our best to provide these webinars and our website, which I'm going to go over with you later, um, all those things so that um, we can do our best to support you in this very important job that you've been tasked with. So um, that being said, um, my name is Tasha Burke Peart, and I'm with the Department of Educational Technology Specialist, Google Certified Trainer. And with me, hi, I'm Rebecca Smekla, also uh, exactly what Tasha said, Specialist for EdTech, Google Certified Trainer. Happy to be here. And we're going to go over Google Meet. Um, before I do that, I just want to mention a couple of things. Um, first is in the chat, uh, we have members of our department and extended members um, of, of who are helping us um, with all of your questions. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please put them in the chat. Um, also in the chat, there is going to be a two-question survey. Uh, we want to make sure that our webinars are beneficial for you. So go ahead and answer the survey. Let us know what you want to hear in future webinars, and we'll do our best to provide it for you. Um, there is a little bit of a delay in what we're presenting and what we see in the chat. So just so you know, if it looks like we're um, a little bit behind with the questions. Um, just be patient because this interface um, provides just a little bit of a delay. And the final thing that I want to share with you is everything that we give you is sort of the how-to, but in terms of how this works on your particular campus, you really do need to speak to your administrators. So um, your administrators have the final say in how the process actually works uh, for distance learning on your campus. We're providing you the how and the knowledge to be able to do it, but um, we just want to make sure that you keep the communication open with your admin. So that being said, um, we're going to talk about Hangouts Meet today. I'm just going to go over a little overview, and then Rebecca's going to walk you through. We're going to do live um, and hopefully uh, try to get your questions answered so that you can have some successful meets uh, with your students. So with meets, um, just just a review, um, you can hold video meetings with many people at one, and we're also going to show you a grid view version, uh, which I think is a lot of people have been asking about. It's very beneficial. Um, how you can present your screen, you can add captions, um, very important. You want to make sure that all students um, have the ability to be a part of your meets. So um, talk about captions, um, recording meetings, and then where the recordings go and what you can do with recordings. And then more importantly, we're going to walk through starting a meeting. There's been a lot of discussion on how and what's the best way to start a Google Meet. So what we're saying, what our recommendation is to you right now is that when you're meeting with students, you go through the app selector and you choose the meet icon. Um, you can also go through your web browser at meet.google.com. Um, if you're on a mobile device, um, you're going to get the meet app. But the calendar version, the way that we had mentioned before, going into Meet, um, creating a calendar invite, you can still do that, but we put in parentheses for faculty use only. So please be sure to, um, to go the calendar route when you're dealing with adults. So a couple of things before Rebecca gets started. Um, Hangouts did have an improvement because of our special situation here. And um, you can have up to 250 people per call. Um, one clarification, what we're doing right now is a YouTube live stream because in our webinars, we anticipate more than 250. So we wanted a different platform. So this is kind of us talking to you and not the traditional 
interaction that you would have in Meet. Um, but another thing that has happened with Google is the ability to record meetings and lessons, and they auto save to your Google Drive, and Rebecca's going to show you that. And Rebecca's also going to talk about some improvements. <laughs> All right. So um, Google is listening to educators right now, and they're making improvements um, kind of on the fly, the same way we are right now currently when the um, creator of the meeting, so you, the teacher, or probably the only person that can mute or remove other participants. So if you have a student in your class, they're not able to remove other students in your class. They're not able to remove the teacher. Only the teacher has that um, capability. And that is available right now. Um, coming soon, meeting participants will not be able to rejoin a nicknamed meeting once the final participant has left. Um, note this only works if the teacher uses the app selector and creates a unique nicknamed meeting. This won't work if it's a calendar invite. So that's why we caution you not to use the calendar invite with students. Um, and again, that is not currently available, but it should be available very soon. Um, additionally, students cannot create their own rooms. Correct. So uh, before we do our live, uh, demo, I want to talk a little bit about um, this etiquette guide. Now, uh, Rebecca found this from uh, evolvingeducators.com, and we thought it was really, really, really appropriate to show um, this suggested guideline, because you do um, need to set up your expectations. In our last webinar, uh, Kaylin and John talked a lot about setting up the expectations with our students, um, and one of the things that you have to do is, is to let them know what the appropriate guideline is for using Google Meet in terms of muting and how do you ask a question? How do you take turns? And so everybody's not talking all at the same time. Uh, where do you look? Where's the camera? You know, I catch myself sometimes looking away, but the camera's right ahead. And um, how to stay attentive and really pay attention. So this, along with the resources from today, is going to be on a website. So um, all this information will be available for you. And after Rebecca does the presentation, I'll show you where to find all the resources from today. So that being said, we're going to have our demo now. Um, we're going to talk about creating a meeting and adding a nickname and why you would want to add a nickname, uh, starting the meeting and turning on captions and recording and where does the recording go. So please remember, we have uh, moderators with a wrench by their name in the chat and they're there helping answer questions. Please feel free to put your questions in and this is recorded. Um, I will show you at the end where to find it. Okay, Rebecca, take it away. Thank you, Tasha. Okay, we're gonna get started and we're gonna go really slow. So to get started with a Hangout Meet, you want to go to the top right of your mail or your Google Drive or anywhere you see the app selector. And once you click the app selector, you're gonna look for the icon that says Meet. Click that icon and that's going to take you to meet.google.com. We like joining from our mail or from our drive because that lets us know that we have the correct account logged in. So we're not logged into our personal account, we're logged into our palmbeachschools.org account. And you should see your icon in the top right hand. Next, we're going to join, or excuse me, we're gonna start a meeting. So clicking that button allows you to enter your unique nickname. So I'm entering my unique nickname and we are recommending the configuration last name, first three letters of the first name, your school number, underscored by your department or what you teach. So ELA, science, social studies. And then if you are a secondary teacher and you have block one, block two, adding that number as well. So I'm a, going into my screen, I can see some of my teammates are already in the um, meet. I can turn my microphone on or off down here at the bottom. I can check in the settings um, which camera I have on and which audio I have on before I even join the meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and join the meeting. 
And you're going to see some of my teammates. Oh, I got to turn my mic on. Now you're going to see some of my teammates here and you can see them in the normal standard meet view. But we have discovered, not we, someone on social media discovered and shared with us this awesome, oops, excuse me, um, ex Chrome, Google Chrome extension for the grid. So people have been asking for that grid view, right? Ah, oh, there we go. So now it's Brady Bunch style. I can highlight my speaker, include myself in the grid. So installing this extension is going to allow you to see more of your students in your class. Um, I believe, how many did we have on the call this morning? 24, 20, give or take? Uh, yep, 20. 20? So it mm -hmm. worked really, really well for us. Um, just keeping in mind that this is a third party um, extension, so it's not created by Google, but we have found it to be very useful and the terms of service states that it does not um, share any student data, so it should be safe for us to use. So we wanted to share that with you and how it looks and everybody wanted to kind of do the Brady Bunch look around. <laughs> Someone was supposed to play the music, but I guess I got left out. <laughs> All right, so now that we are um, in our Google Meet, we're going to talk about some of the things we can do here. So <laughs> I have a navigation bar right here down at the bottom. On the left, those are my meeting um, details. So this is, you don't want to share this link with your students, okay? What you want to share with your students is your unique nickname as well as the phone number for those um, who may need to be calling in. And so then what you would do is grab that number, go into your Google class and go ahead and share that with your students as well as the unique name. Uh, what is my unique name? Two, what is it? My, oops, excuse me. And then I would do that and tell my students to go to, and I can add that as a link. You can add um, meet.google.com, add that link, tell my students and my instructions, go to Google Meet, put in this unique name, and join me um, at the certain time that you're going to join. Okay, so there's our details. Also on the navigation bar, I can turn my mic on and off. You'll, you'll see it turns red when you mute yourself and you can see that uh, my teammates are all muted except for Eric. And you see Eric has the three green dots so I can see that he's not muted as well. If I wanted to mute Eric because he's got some background noise going on, I go up to the top and click on my people and click on Eric's name and then I can mute him. Why can I not mute him? Hmm. I'm stumped. <laughs> is it because you guys joined before me? Who joined okay, first? Yeah. Dana's, the, Dana's the first one to join, so she can mute people. She's technically the creator. Wow, Dana's the teacher. Okay, Dana, mute Eric for me. <laughs> Okay, awesome. And then let's pop out of there. So down at the bottom, I'm gonna turn my captions on. Turning on captions is something we recommend. It's going to help our students. Um, doesn't look like captions work in grid view. We haven't tried this out, so I'm gonna pop out of grid view. There we go. So captions do not work with that grid view. Good to know. I'm gonna interrupt for one second. Um, again, why are we going through this instead of posting the link into Classroom? Why did we go through the app selector? Okay, question was, the answer is because that link inside of the Meet is going to always stay the same and students can go in and join without the teacher being there. If you go through the app selector and give it a unique name and the teacher uh, goes into the room first, then they are going to be the creator of that room. So again, if 
you want to have your students join in a Google Meet, you go through the app selector and then make a name and then share the name and have your students go to the same place and paste the name in. Otherwise, the room will not lock itself. I apologize for cutting in, but it's it was going through quite a bit. So, No, absolutely. I appreciate that, John. Okay, so we're going to go through a couple more of the navigation tools, and then I'm going to show you how to present. But over here on the far right-hand side, if you click the three dots, you're going to see a lot of other options. There's some help that you can get directly from Google. If you have a problem, you can report it. You can use your phone for audio. You can go into your settings, and again, that just brings up your audio and video, so you can test your audio, test your video, and make sure that everything is good. So if you needed to change microphones or headsets, you could do that there. And I can turn off captions if I don't want to see those anymore. I can go full screen, and that's just going to take away um, the bars across the top and give me some more real estate. Oops. And I can change that layout. So you do have some built in native options inside of Google Meet. So I can do the sidebar, I can do tiled, I can do a spotlight if I want it on just one particular person. If I wanted to pin uh, one particular person, I can scroll over that pin and then pin that person to the screen. and unpin just as easy by clicking that pin and I'll go back to my uh, spotlight or grid view. And then we want to record. So when we're ready to record, we click the record button. It's going to ask for consent. We will accept. And then in the top left-hand corner, once the beginning of recording starts, you'll now see the red recording and this meeting is now being recorded. So we went through the navigation bar on the bottom Let's look at the navigation at the top. So you should see yourself in the top right hand corner. And if you're speaking, you're gonna see green lines moving up and down. If you're muted, you'll see the red microphone. Uh, next is the chat box and you can click into the chat and you can uh, put links in the chat. You can have your students ask questions. So if you're doing a live uh, lesson with your students, you would ask them to ask the questions in the chat. And then I can see all of the people who are in the chat. You're always going to be on the top. And then everyone underneath is going to be in alphabetical order by the first name. Okay, so Adam, Dana, David, Eric, Melissa, and Mike. So here we are. I can also add people if I want to to the call through email. I can invite Tasha to join us. Um, and I can also call. So if I wanted to invite Tasha, uh, that will send an invitation to her. Okay, so we recorded. We added Rebecca, quick question again. Can participants record the meetings or can only the owner record the meetings? Good question. So anyone right now currently in the meeting can click that record button. But it will tell you in the top left corner that someone has clicked record. Yes. Um, so just keep that in mind. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And um, for your reference, when you record a meeting, the person who starts the recording and the owner of the meeting will also get that recording emailed to them after the recording is over. It usually takes about five, 10 minutes to get there. Oh, look, Tasha joined us. Welcome, Tasha. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the recording by going to the three dots again and clicking in the top, stop recording. I'm going to stop. I'm going to thank my teammates very much for joining today for this demo. And I'm going to now pop out of here and show our participants how to get to those recordings in Google Drive. Bye, team. So I'm going to click over here to my Google Drive. And again, when you do a recording, it takes um, up to 10 minutes, depending on how long the recording was, to receive the recording and you'll get an email notification once it's ready. But Google creates a folder for you. You don't have to do the heavy lifting on this one. Google's gonna take care of it for you. And they're going to call that folder Meet Recordings. So if I click into my Meet Recordings, 
It's not going to show me the one that we just recorded, but there are some examples of ones that I've recorded in the past. So if you notice, it's going to give you um, the room name. It's going to timestamp it for you. So my recommendation would be for you to right click on it and rename it. I would keep the timestamp, but just name it, you know, water cycle um, lesson one, because this is going to go along with what you're teaching in your class, right? And you can then save this and you can take that file and you can um, add that directly to your Google Classroom for your students by getting a shareable link. You can also move it into your Google Classroom folder, grab the link there, share it out with your students so they have access to it. If you had a chat as well, it will also give you a transcript of that into your Google Drive as well at the same time. Okay. I think we are good for my side. Did I miss anything, team? Just a question I there. Think it was we good. Have to... I just wanted to point out uh, one thing. When I joined the meeting that was already recorded, we did have a couple of people uh, question about the permissions um, when you're recording with students. Um, as Rebecca showed uh, before, she um, recorded, it did give a, a, a notice for consent. Before I can actually join the meeting, it in bold letters it was fully transparent that the meeting was being recorded. So um, just rest assured that everybody who is a part of it knows um, that it is being recorded and has to agree. And we're going to have some questions on the screen real quick. Um, hopefully they can hear me. But Tasha and Rebecca, I'll throw some up there for you to answer. OK. While you're doing that, if you want to go ahead and share my screen, I just have some additional resources that Rebecca put together. Um, it'll be a part of the slide deck. We have um, some really good information from Google in terms of you know, um, the directions for Hangout and the teacher guide that my team created. Uh, Teach From Home is a site from Google. Uh, we also put a link to that student etiquette guide so that you would have it. And then um, the extension that they were using with the grid view, Google Meet grid view, um, we put that there as well. Please know that, again, that was a third party extension and it didn't look like there was any student data being shared. Um, but it's a great way to see all your students uh, at once, but know that there are a few limitations to that because it's not actually a, a Google created. Uh, extension. So Tambia asks, do we need to create an invite for uh, each day for students to join? Rebecca, you want to answer that one? Because I think it has to do with the nickname. So it would just be your, your nickname. So you don't have to create a new one every day. It's just the same one that you create with the last, um, last name, first three of your first name. Um, your school number, underscore, and your subject. That's what we are suggesting. Um, and so then it, what happens is you as the teacher have to go and open the room before the students will be allowed to join. That's, um, that's what's coming. Can you invite your whole Google Classroom in one action? Yes, yes, you can. Um, just like uh, I demoed, if you go into your Google Classroom and you tell your students to go to meet.google.com at a certain time, and then you give them the nickname, once you are in the room, your students will be able to join. Can you, oh, this is a great question, uh, being able to co-host in a Google Meet. Um, and you want to be able to monitor the chat as well as share screen. So the idea that we shared in the last session with the reset button um, was essentially if you work with a team, um, so let's say your language art eighth grade, you can have all of your eighth grade language art students in the same Google Meet at the same time. And then all the teachers are in that meet as well at the same time. So that way it's almost like your team teaching. So one person could be presenting and then your colleagues could be working the chat and answering questions and things like that. So that's one way to be able to co-host um, while screen sharing. 
Any other ideas? I, I just threw that out there from the last session, but. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, you can also open it up in maybe two windows and just kind of split screen. I don't know if would that work? Yeah, one other idea I had is if, if you're only using a district Chromebook, maybe you were only, that's the only device you have. It, I believe it has an HDMI port. You could technically plug that, that computer into your television. And that's a, a, a second monitor. So you can kind of monitor things um, separately as well. Um, Rebecca, I think this one's asking about captions. How did you turn oh. those on? Love so, the uh, captions. Uh, I don't, do you want me to demo it? Yeah, if you don't mind just hopping back in that meet and then just showing where the captions pop up. You don't have to show how it actually works, but there's just a little button in the bottom. I'm, I'm there. I think uh, it's you got to take the question off so I can demo it. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> there we there go. You go. So it's really simple. If you look over here on the um, right of your navigation bar inside of Meet, all you have to do is click turn on captions, and then it's going to make my picture get smaller, and now the captions are going to appear at the bottom of the screen. You can see that um, they're actually really good. Google will um, go back and fix what you said, and in context so the the captions are really beneficial for live i do want to to note that when you are recording a meet with captions the captions do not record unfortunately hmm. so these this captioning is only available when you are live in the meeting it will not record these captions and if you want to turn them off to get more um, pictures on your screen you turn off down at the bottom same place you turned on and while you're there, will you show where the chat is in the top right corner? So sure. students can actually do a text chat like you guys have in this feature right there. So you can make, you can have, maybe your rule is at first, all students are muted and they can only tap, click, type in the text chat. Now again, that goes back to the expectations. That goes back to you setting your rules tomorrow with what you're expecting out of your students. And if they misbehave, I think the whole, if a kid doesn't agree, I think that basically means, um, you know, you mute them first. If they continue to misbehave, then you can remove them from the meet and then have a personal conversation with them and let them know what your expectations are. Um, it's all about that digital citizenship that we really, you know, need to think about. Um, can you change the captions to another language? No. At this point, yeah, at this point, um, they're in English, uh, the particular captions, um, but I did read um, on one of the Google forums that a lot of people are asking about that, so could be coming up. One idea is that you do get the, um, you get the transcript. Mm -hmm. You could kind of put it through Google Translate. It's not perfect, but it is something, you know, at least that you have something for another language. Um, we talked about going over what to call your class again. Um, you know, the, those directions will be in the presentation, which is all on our website as well. Um, so let's go. Okay. So with that, I think we're going to hop over to Tasha real quick to close up. Yes, um, thank you guys. Uh, I just wanted to bring attention to our educational technology uh, training website. It's edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. And on this particular website, you'll have uh, information. Here's our calendar right here. If you want to add the calendar to your calendar, just click on this plus sign. will do that. But you'll see all the webinars that we have coming up. Um, I also want to point out that we are at Tech, so we're the how, uh, and so we provide you with the tools and the knowledge to use the tools and, again, integrate the tools. But if you have any content-related questions, um, I put a link to the Teaching and Learning Teacher Support site. So you're really going to want to check the Teaching and Learning site for any content-based questions. Um, as we mentioned, everything uh, that we do is recorded. So in the live stream resources, you'll find the information for um, our previous recordings, um, Google Classroom, Google Meet, Google Drive. Um, there's also going to be uh, additional ones coming soon. And um, 
that's pretty much it done. Did I cover everything or is there anything else? To oh, I did one big one um, and I'm looking forward to saying this, but if you want to subscribe uh, to our channel, <laughs> Just go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Um, we'd love to have you subscribe and stay uh, abreast of what we're doing. Uh, just a like couple more questions as we go along. Um, do you know if it picks up the native language of the speaker? I, the do not, I, I do not personally know, but I would love to find out. Yeah. And so, Maggie, feel free to go in and test do your it. own test. Like, you yeah. can go in and just make a room and, and uh, just make sure it's a unique name because you don't want to call it test or else you're going to join someone else's room just called <laughs> test. Um, and then try speaking in a different language. Um, and then just to clarify, captions will not be available if you record the meet, but only the chat's transcript. Is that what you said? That is, yes, captions are not recorded. When you record, um, your meet, what happens is what you're presenting on the screen will be on one slide and then picture in picture for your face on the other and captions are not recorded. Perfect. Oh, did I demo that? I'm not sure if I did. Yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> um, and then as Tasha's demoing, go ahead, Tasha. I was just going to say one final thing is if you have any specific questions, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, you can reach out to any one of us. Uh, what we normally do is we have a lot of emails and we just um, forward them to the group so that uh, somebody will be able to answer them. Um, but please continue to ask your questions. We really do want uh, you to know that we're here to support you. That being said, um, I think we're about done. Re Rebecca, is there anything else you needed to say? Uh, no. Uh, just feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're here to help you and support you in this new journey. All right. Thanks, 